Welcome to the Inner Princess course guide to Cherry Blossom Easy on Walkabout Mini Golf. This video will cover the first nine holes, looking at the different options available to you and how to decide on which to use. This is another course in which all 18 holes can be holed in one, so please do check out my previous video if you'd like to see how this can be done. Cherry Blossom is set in a beautiful Japanese themed garden, which is my absolute go to happy place in this game. The running water, birdsong and mountainous backdrop provide a serene environment to immerse yourself in. The course itself is characterised by straight edges and clean angles, and in this world, precision is your best weapon. So we start our route through the garden with hole one, and before you begin your round, take a moment to appreciate the view. It also took me weeks of playing this course before I thought to even look backwards, where you'll meet one of the many sources of water flowing into the course. With no straight line from tee to cup, you have a couple of routes into the green. The first, and most reliable, is to play towards the banking straight ahead of you and let the ball redirect to within putting range. The absolute worst thing you can do here is overhit, so just bear that in mind and keep it simple. The second route involves a spot of angle play off the left side wall. This has a pretty good chance of hitting the hole in one, providing you get the line right. The risk here though is that you could go to any number of worse positions if you miss it, and so I tend not to play this shot in competition on balance of risk and reward. If you do go long, you can still try for the unlikely birdie, but it shouldn't be too difficult to just lay up for par if you're not feeling brave. Hole 2 quickly ramps up the difficulty and requires a precise line or touch. The two bridges joining the broken segments of green are reasonably narrow but are positioned in a way that offers you a tempting shot at an eagle or even albatross. If you are to make it over in one, you'll need to aim just left of middle on the first bridge, but be sure not to catch the corner post on your way out. Hitting this with enough power gives you a chance at finding the hole in one here, but remember now and across your entire round in Cherry Blossom, increasing your power generally decreases your accuracy. So where you have a narrow line to aim for, you'll need to judge just how hard you're comfortable hitting it. I'm also going to use this moment to explain one of the other concepts at work in your angle play, and that is allowing for the spin on the ball. You'll see when the ball hits this back ball, that when the speed is slow enough for the friction of the mat to allow for it, the slight spin which is still on the ball bites into the mat and widens the angle. This is something you'll need to practice getting a feel for and is a key component in evaluating your shots on a course like Cherry Blossom. In practical terms, the angle path your ball takes is impacted by the power you play it with and the deflecting angles it's subjected to. The third hole takes the requirements away from a precise line and onto precise power as you make a jump over the running stream. Be sure not to neglect the line here though, as playing too far left will bounce your ball back towards the gap. If you play a safe yet confident weight into the angled deflector, you'll end up on the green and should have a safe and straightforward putt for birdie too. That is, if you want to take the safe and straightforward route. To try for the hole in one here, you'll need to play a far gentler weight over the jump, as this allows the deflection to send your ball cut bound and isn't too much of a risk, providing you're comfortable judging your weight. Hole four swaps water hazards for sand and is another test of extremely precise weight. As a par four, you should look to gain a shot or two here, and you have two main routes to get to the cup and any number of bonus routes to show off. And yes, I do mean you, Dustin. To play for a near certain birdie, you can play to the end wall, over to the wide opening and into the cup. But to try for the eagle, you'll need to take on one of the far narrower openings. This requires a really well judged tee shot with about two inches of margin either way. Hit this right and you'll have a straight line in. If you've left a small section of corner between you and the cup, still take on the putt, just make sure to focus on hitting the right weight. If you're looking to have fun with your route, I particularly like the in and out sand shot, so give it a try if you're feeling spicy. Hole 5 is, for me, a work of beautiful simplicity. There is a peaceful elegance to the routes from tee to cup, and there are three main ways to approach the hole. At a par 3 you'll be looking to leave with at least a birdie, but you should be aiming to always at least try for the hole in one. You have a rectangular section of banking to help steer you towards the cup, and naturally you'll first try playing straight into it for a deflection. To the best of my knowledge and experience though, you can't get the hole in one this way without hitting a wall somewhere, so this is a safe but limited route for two. The narrow opening does allow for a straight shot to the back wall and into the hole for one, and this should be your choice of route if you favour line over weight. 
This is one of a number of routes brought to my attention by PM Willow, who is a great contributor to the community and a player who has coached and casually mentored a vast number of new players, myself included. If you see him on the course, be sure to soak up all his experience and advice and say hi from me. If, like me, you tend to favour weight over line, there is a second hole in one route which involves catching a shallow deflection off the side wall to your right, which allows the banking to steer your ball into the cup for an eagle. Hole 6 actually has a very similar decision process to hole 5, in that as a par 3 you may as well be trying for the hole in one, and there are two main routes to try for it this time. The sharp pointed angles created by the perimeter wooden wall allow once again for a direct line to the back wall and enter the hole, but this is really tight. If you're a confident line putter, this should be your preferred option and is another route suggested by PM Willow. Remember to factor in for the spin bite off the back wall as this will come into play with your angle work. The second route has a greater level of forgiveness but maybe a slightly harder hold in one. This involves using the wall to your left to take an angled deflection just past the right corner. If you miss the hole in one, you should still be left with a very easy birdie too. If you've been having a good round so far, be prepared to potentially throw that all away on hole seven. This layout requires a combination of balance, line and weight in order to send your ball up the ramp and back into the middle section home to the cup. Miss either side and you're taken to the flanking pits of despair. There are a number of routes to take on this hole and ultimately it will come down to whichever you feel is most reliable for your putting ability. The first, and perhaps most straightforward, is to simply judge the banking to curve your ball straight into the middle section. This won't generally provide enough speed to get the hole in one, but if this measure of weight comes naturally to you, it's a reliable birdie. The second route involves using the point at the top of the ramp to centre your ball before it rolls back down. The closer to the top you can get your ball, the more likely you are to end up safe, so use the wall to the left of you to catch a direct angle upwards and you should be close to, if not in, the hole. If you do happen to overshoot, remember you'll just have to play effectively the same shot again but better. So keep your focus and get it right second time, or third, or fourth. Our penultimate hole on the front line takes an entirely new turn for the round by integrating an element of controlled chaos not yet seen in the last seven holes. Your ball sits at the top of the mound and the route down involves carving a path through a mess of angled slopes. Being a par 4 you can still play safe and get yourself a birdie. To do this play straight forward into the holding tier, which is relatively risk free. Follow this with a confident putt down the left side and you'll be delivered close to the hole for a safe 3. To improve on this the goal is to get down, or preferably in, with just one shot. To do this play against the left side and rebound off the side back wall. The key part of this shot is to catch a bounce here, which alters your path and gives you a chance of going in for the albatross. I don't choose to play to the opposite side as there's a chance the ball can come to rest on the corner as shown. That said, the developers may well fix this in the future if they so choose. The main risk to be aware of with this hole in one route is jumping or bouncing out of bounds, so if in doubt, under hit. We conclude the front nine with a straight green broken into a zigzag with two sand traps. Set under one of the namesake cherry blossom trees, this is the last time you'll play at ground level before beginning your ascent up the rocks to the back nine. A quick note on lines here, this is one of a number of holes that has conveniently placed darkened dots on the mat. As a general rule of thumb, if you see a dot like this, the great developers above are probably trying to show you something, so it's always worth trying to aim for these to just see what happens. In this case, the dots give you a guide on where to aim your shot for a safe channel through. For the day course, your best route is found aiming just inside the left dot and give the ball enough pace that the spin won't bite until you're past the second opening. This should leave you a straightforward birdie putt, which you can do what you want with. If you aim right at the left dot, you have a chance of going in off the back wall for an eagle hole in one. If you do take this route, be careful not to let your line drift outside the dots or you'll likely find the sand. This concludes the front nine of Cherry Blossom Easy, or Daytime, and I hope you've picked up a few pointers from this video. On the full 18, if you find yourself at 15 under, you've had a good steady round. 20 under is a very good score, and 25 under or better is heading towards exceptional. Join me in part two for the back nine, which offers a completely fresh set of challenges to the round. As ever, please do join the Discord to connect with a growing and welcoming community, and to keep informed of competitions and tournaments being arranged. 
I'll cover the various ways and formats to compete in another video soon, so please subscribe if you haven't already to get access to future videos as soon as they're released. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you out on the course.